you wanna Clean your carburetors Oh yeah you do Yeah you do Oh yeah Baby we're about to get these carburetors so clean You're gonna wanna make them dirty again Ha Ah Okay, it's time to get a little bit dirty by getting a little bit clean. What is up, my dudes? Welcome back to the Carburetor Rebuild series. This is part three. We're going to be putting these bad boys back together, which means they're going to be going over a couple of things like float height, um, how everything's going to go back together. Maybe I'll do another video where I'm going to explain how to sink and get them all back in. But right now I've got them all covered up, had them all wrapped up because it's been a minute since I last worked on them. And I just didn't want all kinds of dust and stuff to start collecting. So I just kept all these in place. Nothing's going to happen with the jets and stuff. But as far as the carburetor bodies, I've already got some air in the system here. Probably just going to give it another quick blowout, make sure that there's no little pieces hanging around and get ready to reassemble. So if you're just finding this video, these carburetors are off of a 2003 Suzuki Bandit 1200. And underneath, you want to be careful underneath the throttle position sensor, um, which I'll, we'll have to reset. And I've got all the instructions on how to do that. Um, there's a little metal washer. So if you go blowing things around, just make sure you pull that out, set that aside. Don't forget to put it back in there, <laughs> but um, it's just something loose that I don't want flying off as I am blowing these out one more time. So I'm just gonna kind of go through. So that's the right way. I need to get might be easy with a flathead, but before I do that, I also need to put my spring and my fittings into place. And as far as these bits go, I, they look like just like support pieces. I'm fairly certain the two shorter ones go on the ends and these two longer ones are gonna go in the middle. And that makes sense to me, considering there's uh, your throttle cable piece in the center and your uh, the holder for your cables. That little bump, bumperoo goes in there, I think. Then I think the other one goes down here. Might put a little dot of grease on there, uh, just to keep it in place. See if that works. Now grease is going to be important for, and sorry I didn't need, tell you you needed that in the first place, for your O-rings. Any of these O-rings that you're putting together into the carburetor body, it's always gonna be a really tight fit. Grease helps that slide into place easier because what could end up happening is if you stick this in dry, it can kind of catch on the O-ring. It could either rip it or flip it out of place. Then you have all your carburetors back together, back in your bike, and now you've got a gas leak. So that means pulling this all back apart. You don't wanna do that. Just a light layer of grease. Might even put a little bit of grease in that hole there. Nice and lubed up. Nice and lubed. Just kind of wiggle it into place. Just kind of to check around the edges and make sure that is fully seated and there's no pieces of o-ring sticking out so you know everything went in really easy. Now normally there's a little piece here that goes in between this little hose and that's going to sit on that edge there and it is going to connect on that side and that's going to be your overflow but of course <laughs> i don't have that these pieces i'm still waiting on in the mail so yeah screw you that should have showed up already but it hasn't so well they're easily they're easy to bend so i'm just going to put them on later so we'll do that pull this spring down
to get the lever underneath that spring. It's sort of just a balancing act and there may be a better way to do this, but I've seen mechanics do this in like two seconds and I think it's just a matter of practice. Yeah, I was definitely right. The longer pieces go in the center there. Woo! <laughs> there we go. I wanna get one of these on. A little bit of blue will do. Just to keep this bad boy in place. Just a dab. And there we go. So if you get them mixed up like me, <laughs> the bars in between, the support bars are actually three different lengths. So the shorter ones are going to go along the edges and the longer ones, the same as these little separator pieces in between each carburetor body, are these ones are gonna be longer. Look at that. It's almost looking like carburetors again. <laughs> cool, right? All braced together. I'm just gonna make sure and see. Yeah, these all move really nicely together. Double check, make sure no O-rings are sticking out. Those are pushed together really nicely. All of my little support pieces, nothing's come off kilter or is sticking out. Let's go ahead and put our freshly cleaned choke bar back on. Make sure each one of these little pieces lines up with the arm. Go ahead and reassemble our tops as well so that we have a nice base to work with as we put together the float bowls. However, before these go in, we need to put in the uh, needle seat, I guess is what it's called. Remember that the part that is tapered looks like a bowl. That's the part that's going to go, gonna be facing up. And then the other side, which is flat, is going to go down into the carburetor body, dropping them in the big main jet hole. And I'm just gonna push those into place. For some reason, these won't push into place. I'm just gonna use the main needle jet to screw it in. You should be able to see them sticking out from there. Before you put any of these O-rings in, you want to put just a very light layer of grease. Like I said, it just keeps the O-rings from ripping themselves up, helps them seat a little bit better. Yada yada doo doo hoo hoo boo boo. Where was I? Okay, you put your O-rings in, then we're gonna take our beautiful diaphragms, make sure that no gunk or things have gathered on here. And these only go in one way, so let's put them in. Oh yeah, baby. Nice and smooth. Just kind of want to push that edge into place. This one's being real difficult. I might have to heat this up to get it uh, to stretch that last little bit. Make sure you put your string back in there. That's not like janked up or caught up in anything. It sits in there really nicely. Remember I said that these orient a certain way, so there's going to be that vent hole there that goes into the top of the carburetor. You're going to want to line that up with the O-ring. Put that in there. Just make sure it does not bend up on you too much. Cool. And the way that you test your diaphragm is try and slide it up and down. Make sure that it comes back down, especially these type. See how it just slides down naturally? Nothing wrong. Everything's good. Repeat for all the other ones. Right there. So I had to stop the video for the day, uh, but I finished putting together the tops and all it did take was a little bit of heat. So I just used the heat gun, heat up that diaphragm, the rubber, just a little bit and it just slid right into place. I was able to put all the tops on, tightened all of these down. You don't have to do them like super snug because there's not like a whole lot of pressure on these trying to pull on them. So you're good there. The only other thing was I tightened up the two long bar screws that go through and made sure those were tight. The actual torque settings for those, I think it said it was like five foot pound. No, it was like 1.5 foot pounds or something like that. Yeah, uh, 1.5 foot pounds of torque. So that's not, uh, obviously it's almost nothing. So you just wanna get those tightened down. Same with these screws for the choke bar. Just make sure that it's pulling each one of the little actuators here and you're solid, good to go. So I ended up trying to get some new, uh, so I ended up trying to get some new vacuum caps for the three here because the fourth one, the large one, you're supposed to run that into the petcock in order to 
actuate because it's a vacuum petcock, which sucks, but I went to the local auto parts store and they did not give me the right size. And the guy was like, yep, yep, that's the size. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, bro, that ain't the size. These things are so tiny, these little fittings. So I'm just gonna end up reusing the old caps that I pulled off and maybe I'll find a use for these eventually. Also got some vacuum line that fits this really nicely. It's a little bit thicker than the old stuff, but honestly, it looks great. It's gonna work fine. Let's go ahead and start putting the bowls back together. So we're gonna be setting the float heights. These floats are adjustable and the float height is the space that you measure between the seat of where the gasket goes, the flat part of the carburetor and the actual top of the float. We're looking at 13 millimeters give or take half a millimeter. This is why you do have to have some sort of measuring tool or device. I really do love having my digital calipers because I can set these to 13 and lock it into place. That's close enough. Yeah, 13, look at that, perfect. I can lock that into place. I made sure to zero it out. And so that is going to be my distance that I want. And they actually make calipers specifically for this they make float height calipers which is or they're really cool um, so once this gets in place i want to make sure that the distance right there from where that float sits once it's fully once it's seated that's where it's going to be so let's get all this in, installed yeah it does involve taking it off or if you want to you can even just bend this little metal tang so the way that you adjust it is this metal piece right here you can either bend it up so that it sits lower or you push it down so that it sits higher. So as far as reinstalling everything that goes into the float bowls, I'm going to put a little bit of grease on these needle seats here. These are the brand new needles. Ooh, there's a little bug spider here. It's made its home. Yes, run away, run away. Yes, give me the sweet carcinogens. Gosh, I feel like I've just been breathing heavy. I'm sorry, guys. Oh, I'm so fucking out of breath. I don't know why. Bada bing, bada boom. Now we'll remember to put our little screw in, which keeps the seat in place. We'll install our pilot jets here, and that one is going to go in the lowest stepped one. So big one is your main jet. Uh, second one, it almost, it actually is a little bit higher as your secondary jet, and then you have the lowest one in here, and that's gonna be where your pilot jet goes. It's also gonna be the only one where it fits, doesn't fit into that one, so kind of makes it easy that way too. Once you get to this point, it's really good to double check everything as you go, especially like these jet sizes, because they are the same exact jet, just a different sizing. You would hate to have to pull everything back apart because one of the cylinders isn't running right, because you accidentally put the wrong jet in. <laughs> so with these ones as well, these little O-rings, I'm still going to put just a tiny bit of grease. You're not globbing grease on here. You're just getting your finger greasy and then getting a light layer of grease on there. With your air fuel mixture screws, once you turn them all the way in and seat them, you don't want to put them really tight. You want to put them just very lightly seated. The stock for the 2003 Suzuki Bandit, and I think all of those K bikes are going to be three turns out. I'm doing three and a half because I want it to be a hair richer. So I'll do that with the rest of these, set them at three and a half turns out. All of my air fuel mixture screws are now set, so I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall the floats. I don't think it really matters which direction. This little piece on the end, the metal tang, I'm just gonna slide it on that way. Tang, slide it underneath there. You wanna make sure these tips are actually pretty clean because uh, if there's anything, literally any little tiny piece of debris, it can stop it from sealing on the seat and then you have overflowing carburetors. <laughs> cool, all the floats are installed. So now we're going to make sure that the height is set correctly. What we're gonna do is turn this on its side. And there are actually tools you can use and that like you can mount up and will hold it at the angle you need because that's the painful part of this is that you're not supposed to just test them at this point because you see how low they get. See how they change the, hopefully you can see on the camera. Maybe I'm, hopefully I'm angling this right. See, at that point right there, that's when your needle is seated. So this point where they all just kind of flop down even more, that's not where you want it. So there's a certain angle degree you're supposed to hold these at, but I kind of just do my best and gauge it. So 
can see where that little latch is with the needle seat. And this is where it's hard for me to try and explain this the best I can on the camera. I'm just gonna turn these so right where that needle seat's right there. That's, that's it. I don't want it any lower. I know I've already set this to 13. So I'm just gonna line that up. That is pretty, pretty freaking dang spot on, yo. That is really good. Hopefully the camera's picking it up, but that that is gosh dang near perfect. And I'm really happy with that. That one's close enough, I'm happy. And that one is honestly a little high. So what I'm gonna do is get something even smaller to fit in there. And we're going to try and bend this up a little bit. Try and do it without doing it at an angle here. Some carburetors, it's really easy to kind of wiggle something in there and get it out. I might actually use my little hook here, my little dental pick tool. Yeah. So that might allow me to get it in there without having to pull this whole float off. And if you do have to take the float off, that's totally okay. It's kind of trial and error. I've done that many times where I've had to pull a float off multiple times, adjust it, put it all back on, measure it, adjust it. It's, it's just totally part of the process. So what did I say? It was, the float was too high, so we need to lower it. And try reach in and just pull that tang up a little bit and go back just to reference oh yeah I like that better it's see it's just super tiny adjustment it, you I couldn't even tell that it really made that much of a difference but when you're working with increments of millimeters it does totally make a difference recap Float height is correct. All of our jets are in. We've replaced our O-rings. Ah, see, something I didn't want to forget. Let's turn this off. Wanted to make sure that this was tightened down. Ah, see, I didn't completely tighten it down. Now, everything is good with that. We are ready to put the float bowls back on. Yeehaw, boy. The float bowls. I already did clean them out, scrape them out the best that I can. Yeah, see, that stuff's not coming out anymore. If you can't get your float bowl gaskets to stick in place, um, like I did with the diaphragms, you can always give them a little bit of heat, and sometimes just a spot of grease on the underside will help them sort of stick in place as well. Go ahead and install this. And remember, this is just the idle adjustment, so I'm just gonna get it as close as I can there. That's all in and good. Surface is clean. Go ahead that right into place oh it's exciting this is exciting i love when things just all go back together <laughs> usually when i'm installing bowls i don't know why but when i put anything back together i don't tighten anything right away i'll always just seat everything and then go through and tighten each one maybe that makes me weird i don't know all right float bowls are all on one last thing i'm gonna do is make sure that all of the drain plugs are tight <laughs> Because that's something I've done before. I've put carburetors back together, didn't bench test them, and then put them back on the bike. And the only reason that they leaked was because I did not tighten the float bowl screws. Her, her, her. I think that's kind of it now. I'm going to give these a little bit of an idle. I could check to make sure with the flashlight here. See as they open up. Even that might be too much. But as far as your ports and what you want to do here is that you've got your vacuum ports here. This one being the largest, like I said, which is going to run into the fuel pack pack. But these ones you want to make sure that you plug because if you forget to plug these little fittings here, then you're going to have yourself a vacuum leak. Right now I'm going to leave these off because when I put them back on the bike, I'm going to sink the carburetors. I'm going to get the bike nice and hot and then tune these bad boys. And I think we'll do that in another video because I still don't have all the parts for this bike to get it back together and get it running. Man, these look great. These look fantastic. I am so pleased with how these came out. Really turned them around because of how dirty they were. One thing I do like to do before putting the carburetors onto the motorcycle is putting the fuel line on. I think I last checked that this fuel line from Suzuki was about 35 bucks or 30 bucks. I honestly would suggest getting the actual fuel line for this bike because this shape is not just from being put in place for so long. It comes shaped like this. And let me tell you, trying to use a regular fuel line in this shape, trying to fit it from the carburetor underneath the tank is such a pain in the butt. You will kink your line and then you're going to have fuel problems like no 
tomorrow. It is such a pain in the butt and I've dealt with this many times on this bike. So getting something that is already pre-bent, which they do sell, but honestly for the same price, you can just order the one for this bike and it's gonna come bent perfectly for going from the carburetors into your fuel valve. This is one thing for some reason, even though it's been years, I always forget to do, which is put on the fuel line first, trying to get this fuel line on sometimes in between like the air box and the carburetors. Oh my God, it is just a nightmare. <laughs> if your fuel line is cracked, don't reuse it. Get a new one because it is going to leak eventually and you don't want it to happen when you're on a trip out with your buddies or you're out riding around having a great day or you have a whole weekend planned and now all of a sudden you got this little fuel seat. Some people don't care. I care because <laughs> I don't want to do this job twice. Anytime you put fuel line on, you want to make sure that you seat it. What do I mean by seat the fuel line? I mean, do you see that base right there? We want the fuel line to go all the way down onto there. Why do we do that? Because that's what it's there for. That is your carburetors put back together. They are ready to go onto the motorcycle. I should really bench test these. And the way that we do that, let's talk about that real quick. So what I use for bench testing is this fuel reservoir. And I need to go get fuel <laughs> to put in the fuel reservoir because there's like nothing left in there. But what's nice about using this, you can hook it up to your carburetors, open up the valve, and in theory, no fuel should come out of your carburetors. They should fill up with fuel and that'll be it. You can drain it out if you really wanna not get fuel everywhere as you're wrestling them back into the motorcycle. But if it did leak, you'd be able to see if it was seeping, let's say from the float bowl or if it was overflowing. You know, if it does start to overflow, give it a couple of taps because sometimes that float or needle does kind of get stuck. And then if it starts overflowing anyway, that means pulling it apart, figuring out where you went wrong. You don't have to have a fuel reservoir. You can honestly do what I used to do, which would be take a small funnel, have somebody who loves you dearly, who would hold that up for you while you pour gas into it and hold the carburetors up straight or whichever angle that they are in your bike so that you can bench test and make sure that it doesn't leak. I bought this carburetor synchronizing tool from parts unlimited i think back when i used to work at cycle gear i want to say it was around 100 bucks honestly get yourself a carburetor synchronizer if you don't want to have a shop do it if you want to really do this all yourself go for it do it get the synchronizer tool look up how to use it you can make your own but it is so nice to just spend the money and get the thing that makes it there's no trying to create anything there's no at home rig I like having tools. <laughs> so thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video and it helped you out, please subscribe. Consider signing up for my Patreon. It is $1 a month and you'll be able to get all kinds of behind the scenes stuff on this Suzuki Bandit project that I'm working on. If you would like another way to support my channel, I also have all kinds of cool designs up on my Tee Public. You can get it as stickers, t-shirts, hoodies, even tapestries. I'm gonna be uploading more designs soon, so please check it out. It's a way for you to get something cool and you to also support me and help this channel out because none of this stuff is cheap. Links to everything is down in the description and if you would like to find out what's going on with this particular project that I've got going on, it is going to be another Wasteland project. I'm going to put links to that right above. You'll be able to click or check out my other videos where you can see the different parts of this and what we're going to be doing with it. If you want to see the design that I have for this, go ahead and sign up for Patreon or check out my Instagram. I also have some stuff up on there as well. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next time.